Hello everyone, welcome to Cyber Platter. Today we will review one of the very common questions in cyber security interviews. If you're currently preparing for a cyber security interview and you want us to help us with by taking a mock interview of you, please let us know, leave a comment or let us know in our Discord channel. There is a link that is in the description. Also, if you have any queries or questions that needs to be answered, please let us know. Okay, the question for today is what is an injection attack, right? We will also see how it works and how it can be prevented. Injection is one of those attacks which is always on the OWASP top 10 list, right? In 2017, it was first on the list. In 2021, it was third. There are many types of injection attacks like SQL injection attack, OS injection, LDAP injection, command injection, etc. But before we dive into understand what is an injection attack, let's, un let's understand the basics of programming and applications. So what happens in a web application or a program is that, right? A developer writes a code. The code is sent to the interpreter and the interpreter interprets the code and executes it. This code here is used to describe both data and command. This is a very powerful concept, but this also enables what is called as an injection attack. Suppose say this is the query, select star from table and you know table name is T1 where user is equal to user1. Okay, in this, this entire part is the command and this is the data. So let's see what is the expectation in a normal behavior, right? So instead of this code, there is command. This is the normal behavior. There is command and there is data. This is the command. This is the command and this is the data. And this is sent to the interpreter and then it is executed. The command is supposed to be controlled by the web application and the data is supposed to be controlled by the user. Controlled in the sense sent by the user or chosen by the user. Suppose you have a form where it says username. You're putting your username. That is the data that you are inputting. And what happens after that? That is the command should be controlled by the web application. This is our normal behavior. Now let's see what happens in an injection attack, right? Because code is used to the same code is used to represent both data and command instead of sending the data the user can send another command so instead of data here he's going to send another command say you know uh, delete or select or update anything like this okay and this is sent to the interpreter and the interpreter gonna read this and be like, okay, there is another command which should be executed because the application trusts the user and it's gonna go ahead and execute that command, this command as well. So this is where it gets malicious and the application starts behaving in a way that it was not originally intended. So by using this injection attack technique, right, the hacker can make the system to perform an action which can lead to data exposure. Data exposure is by the command say select and then it can be loss of integrity by say update, your send, you know, you're changing the data and then even data deletion. So to better understand injection attack, let's see one of the types of injection attacks that is SQL injection. SQL injection can happen when an application uses SQL database as the backend, okay, to hold the information. So there is a front end like a form or something where the user can input the data like your username and password and then this request is sent to the backend. Backend is where SQL DB is configured, okay, to hold the data, to, you know, query the data from. 
but when the code is improperly coded instead of sending data the users can send commands to the sql database and this causes an sql injection actually let's see an example okay so this is a very basic example you get a form you're logging into an application where it asks you for your username and password what you are entering your username as user one and password one and then the application this is what happens select username password from user table where username is this one okay and this is sent to the database and the database executed the select command so what happens in an sql injection attack instead of sending just the username like this the user is sending the username as well as there is a delete operation okay so the application will write this as a select query where username and password are selected from this table and then there is also a delete operation where the username is user1 so the database executes both select and delete it is deleting the entire row which which belongs to user1 this is an sql injection attack where the data is deleted similar to this you can do another select say instead of user1 you can say user2 select this and that is displayed on the front end or you can say update okay instead of delete from you can say update this table wherever the username is so and so with the data that you want now that we have understood how injection attacks work let's talk about how to prevent them all these prevention techniques that we will be discussing right it is to prevent security events from taking place either in the case of malicious intent or by accident the first one that we will discuss is input validation as the name suggests the user data inputs are validated as early as possible in the workflow right the application should validate if this is the data that it is expecting like when it comes to the attributes like what is the type of data length of data or is this what it is expecting like numbers or is it expecting only strings etc suppose say there is a form which takes in birthdays so for this it might be in mmdd yy format okay so here the application should know that it is expecting only numbers if the user tries to enter something that is other than a number the application should consider the data to be potentially malicious and not process it okay we can further drill this down by saying the month should only be numbers 1 to 12 date should be from 1 to 31 you know like this and whatever we are doing here is one type of input validation called whitelisting where we are making an allowed list okay only this is allowed nothing else like you can put in only numbers here there is also an other type of input validation which is called as blacklisting what happens in this it is in this it tries to detect potentially dangerous characters for example if there is a script tag then you know the application should not execute the command or if there is equal to equal to sign or there is apostrophe then it should not by now you should have got an idea that whitelisting is the is a better way of input validation because we allow only what is expected we are not trying to see what is malicious we are trying to see what the application needs and that is what is present the next prevention uh, technique is prepared statements and stored procedures so the prepared statements and stored procedures right requires the developer to write a code that has the command already specified the command is already specified in this code and the user input is taken only as the data it is if there is a command it doesn't execute it it application is going to come back and tell you it is bad input only it is taken as the data which can be interpreted as a parameter to the query rather than the command itself 
the idea here is to avoid dynamic queries which can cause the injection attacks prepared statements and stored procedures make it so that only the parameters can be specified by the user the functions and commands are already pre-written by the developer so they cannot be changed or exploited the next prevention technique we'll talk about is least privilege in this what happens you're giving you're telling the user that only this is your rights you can only read the data or input the data and cannot execute any of the commands read only access is given to many of the accounts where you don't have to execute a command so by this you can restrict the user not to run any commands against the database that they are not supposed to least privilege is one of the access control mechanisms where it should be used everywhere possible and this helps prevent many of the security incidents so i hope we have discussed and you have understood what is an injection attack how does it work and what are the prevention techniques how code can be used to present both data and command how this this can lead to the injection what is an sql uh, injection how this can be prevented what are the techniques so this is how you answer an interview question maybe you don't have to explain all of this i wanted to tell you because i, I wanted everybody to understand the concept you can shorten it and then present it also if you don't have a lot of time so i'll see you in the next video with another question and answer until then bye bye see ya